So in today's tutorial, we're going to discuss how to replace and tuck point a uh, bolt cement on a brick or block surface. First thing you need is a couple of safety tools. You'll want to have a face mask, which comes with some little air filters that just twist and turn like so. Or you can get a dust mask. These are relatively cheap and easy to purchase at a local hardware store. And some safety glasses if you don't use the full face mask. This will protect your eyes and your lungs from breathing in and all the dust that will be in the air when you're grinding the old mortar out. The next thing that you'll need when you're repairing old cement is a grinding tool to remove the old cement. You can either use uh, a grinder like this, a four and a half inch grinder blade. It's a diamond blade on there. It's really, uh, really what you need to properly grind it out. Um, it's also got this is for safety. It directs which direction the dust is going to go, so it blows away from you, and it also protects other surfaces. So when you're grinding, you don't accidentally cut something that you didn't mean to. Um, these are usually adjustable by a little screw or a lever of some kind. Um, basically, you just get your grinder ready and an extension cord and plug it in. And you're ready to begin. Once you're ready to begin mixing your cement after it's all ground out and ready, you can take your trowel and just kind of hit the bag at an angle like that and it'll tear it open and then just tear it along and then you're ready to begin. Uh, you want to make sure that your cement is there is no rocks or debris in it. You want nice fine uh, cement so that way it easily fits into the small spaces that we'll be working with. Um, it's made specifically for tuck pointing and stucco repair. This particular kind is a type M mixture and the best way to do it is either pour it into a wheelbarrow or you can pour it into a bucket um, and that way you can measure it and be ready to go. A few other tools that you'll need for this process is a margin trowel for scooping out your cement and occasionally doing some patchwork. This is usually referred to as a baller. Basically all this is is the end of a broom handle and you just cut it off be about the size of your palm of your hand there. And you can use this for tooling joints to give it a water runoff slope. You also want to have a pointer and this will allow you to push the cement in between each of the joints while you're uh, repairing your work. The most important piece is a mud board. This will allow you to put small amounts of concrete onto uh, the surface and you can take it with you and, and fill in any spots that you need. Basically you'll just put it on here and just like that right into the joint. A few other things that you may need. This is good for if you have to do some kind of stucco or which is basically where you're forming up a wall with it instead of just a joint. You also want to have a hand brush so that way you can brush off any extra cement that may be stuck to your work when you're done. It gives it a nice professional look. They also have a longer handled one and you can use this as well for the same process, but it's also handy in case you want to clean the brick surface when you're finished using an acid water mixture. Once you've got all your materials and equipment ready, uh, it's time to begin the grinding portion. Um, basically, you've got some voids here where the cement's been pushed back, and as you can see, it's just kind of crumbling out. Um, so that definitely needs replaced. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out these joints and we're going to replace them. 
This part here actually, as you can see, is kind of pulled out a little bit. Um, so that's going to be a block replacement, which we'll cover in another tutorial. Uh, so here we go. Now, as you can see, uh, this part here, the protective uh, covering, is really good for protecting your siding and stuff while you're cutting joints and it gets close to them areas. Once the grinding is complete, uh, you want to remove all the additional debris and dust from the joints. You can either use a garden hose for larger areas and just spray it all down real good, or in this case, especially with the dirt so we don't make a big mud mess, we can just take a brush and just brush in between each and every joint to remove the additional debris. Alright, once you have your area cleaned off and, and got the dust removed and you're ready to start tuck pointing, um, it's best to begin by putting your concrete into a bucket um, or into a wheelbarrow depending on how much you're going to mix. Uh, in this case it's just a little area so we could just put some in here about what we think we might need. And then I recommend using a bucket, another bucket, and put some water in there and this will allow you to measure how much water you're actually putting in your cement so you don't get it too wet. Um, Once you have your water ready, go ahead and pour some in there. Um, for a whole bag of cement, it's about a half a bucket of water. Uh, and you can always add water and stir some more, but you can't take the water back out. If you do end up with too wet of cement, you can always add a little more cement to it to thicken it up, but it's best to avoid that in the first place. Now that your cement's mixed, it should be, as you can see, it's, it's got some substance to it, so it's still pliable, but soft enough that you can work with. <clears throat> so we're ready to point. The first time you use your mud board, you can either take the hose and just lightly spray it, get it wet. This will help the mortar stick to it. Or since we're in a dirt area anyway, we don't want to get mud everywhere. Just put some on there, spread it around. And just push it back into the bucket. Go ahead and just put a scoop on there. Spread around as you can see. It's still sturdy enough not too wet, sticks on there real nice. Take your tuck point tool. These also come with a little handle on the bottom. Depending on what you're doing, you can just take that off if you're working on a low area. Or it's good for wider areas where you have more room. You want to take it and just kind of push in on your first one. You want to make sure that you pack the joint completely full of mortar. Once you've got your joint started, you just push in and pull back. This causes a mud in the mud, and that'll make it just stick in there real nice. Main thing is you want to make sure that each joint gets completely full. Because we're going to come back and tool it later. Once you've got your bed joint done, you're ready to do what they call the headers, which is the up and down joints. You can, just like uh, getting a piece of butter off 
for your toast, just pull it off of there, and sometimes they'll slide off on you. And just put it in the joint, twist it into the brick, and it'll start to fill the space. It can be a little tricky, so just take your time. Another option is you could take your margin trowel and do the same thing. Just like you were getting a little bit of butter for your toast, kind of angle it in there. Make sure you get the joints full. And that's it. Once you've got it tuck pointed, you'll wait about, depends on if it's a really hot day or a cold day. The weather plays a big part in this. But we want it to where we, when we push on it, it's kind of stiff. Right now it's really wet because we just barely uh, tuck pointed it. I'd say about 20 minutes to an hour depending um, on the weather and how, how wet you mixed it when you first got started. So we'll be back. So once the concrete's dry enough, uh, as you'll notice, it's just kind of, it's nice and, and ply, it just comes right off. It's not smeary, it's not wet anymore, it's got to the dryer. Uh, you can take your tuck point tool and just kind of scrape off the excess. You want to kind of do it in an angle, um, that way you're not pulling it out of your joints. And you'll take your baller and you'll take the round end and push it in there. Gives it a kind of a scratchy appearance um, and a water runoff slope to make the water run off the brick and not sit in there. Usually you want to start on one side and just kind of work into the other. You want to make sure that you get it all, otherwise you'll leave what they call a shiner. It kind of stands out. During this process too, it's best if you start with the up and down joints, the headers first. That way your bed joints look more seamless going across. And that's it. Just let it dry, and then uh, we'll come back and brush it. All right. The final step in uh, restoring uh, some brick and block is uh, just to take your brush once it's dried. You can see now that it's not smearing or anything. It's, it's pretty well ready. And you just brush it. Now remove all the extra mortar that's on there and uh, give it a real nice professional look. Uh, once you're done brushing, just take your uh, tuck pointing tool or your margin trowel and just scrape all the droppings away. You want to wait till the end to do this part because otherwise it, when it's all wet it'll just smear and make a big mess. But now it's nice and crumbly so you can clean it up pretty easily. Just scrape it away, put it in your bucket and uh, put in your garbage. You're all done. Thanks for watching.